Good morning, Mr. Desmond. Good morning, Mr. Desmond. I'm excited to always get the opportunity to sit here. Because yeah. mm. then I'll be able to speak my, my, my mind yeah, yeah. Mm. and share my little thoughts with the Ghanaian people. I, I, um, well, I'm not surprised we're hearing this. And I'm not surprised that we're seeing all that we're seeing. Mm. Uh, it's quite clear that this government and its activities are one that we can describe as a scam. A scam. Complete scam. Complete scam. You know, in, I think, uh, mm. prior to the 2016 election, so in fact, no, not 2016 election, when Nana Bianco won the 2016 elections, mm. he made a profound statement, which profound statement sat well with some of us. In fact, we're very excited that he had made that profound statement. His Excellency Nana Branko Kufuado indicated to the Ghanaian people mm. that he was going to transform the fortunes of the people of Ghana within 18 months. 18 months. Well, there's been some transformation, but it appears that that transformation has rather been, uh, I mean, it's rather one that is has been detrimental to the growth of this nation. The 18 months of change that he referred to is what we're experiencing now. The doom so. The 18 months of change that he spoke about is the amount or the quantum of money which have been borrowed by this administration mm. for God knows what. That's the 18 months of transformation that He's talking about indeed his excellency Nana Branko Kuvad has made several statements several statements several several many of them in fact has got to do with even the 88 district hospitals that he said he was going to put uh, put put up so i'm not surprised at all that we're here we're here because in the estimation of Nana Branko Kuvad prior to the 2016 elections we were in doom so because of the mismanagement of former President John Dramani Bahama. Mm. We're in doing so because we didn't have money to be able to run the supply of power for the good people of Ghana. We yeah. didn't have money. I mean, that was the crux of the arguments being espoused by the MPP prior to the 2016 election. And Dr. Baumia was the primus inter pares in that conversation. In fact, he was the pillar around which every propaganda revolved. So I would have thought that maybe they had a magic wand to be able to deal with that, you know, which they found at the time to be wrong. Now, what are we experiencing? We're experiencing doom so. And you see, the doom so that we're experiencing is not as a result of lack of capacity mm. or supply. We have in, it in excess. So the question then becomes, if we have excess capacity, indeed, 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 if you check the Ministry of Finance's website, an indication has been made by the finance minister that we have pow uh, power in excess supply, okay, which have even now been exported to other countries. So if we have it in excess supply and we are able to export same to other countries, then on what basis are we not benefiting from the excess supply of power that we're supposed to have? Jay, are you not surprised? <laughs> Very. That you have food in abundance, and yet you're, you're hungry, hungry in your home. Mm. Does it make sense? In abundance of water, mm. it's thirsty. You're living, <laughs> living by the banks of a river. Yes. Right? And watching your hands with Peter. <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable. No, so that, that statement again, in, in, a, in abundance <laughs> of water. I'm not a Christian. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't. <laughs> 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 ah, you're a proper last time, man. <laughs> you know, so I think that it's about time you chase those bald heads out of town. Because those bald heads are not doing any good for this nation. Now, let's let's get serious with the facts. But government has right? denied any Oh, I mean, oh, but of course, mm. what this administration is better at doing is to do proper PR. MPP don't try. Mm. With PR, they're very good at it. You recall that I think, I think I think for the past three days now I have been highlighting a number of the things that I've been and I'm trying to pull parity with all the other things which were raised because I think it's all incidental to this conversation. Mm. The issue about ensuring that every village in this country will have full su supply of water. Yeah. 
and power. It's one that has to be brought to the fore because that was an admonition, or no, not admonition, that was a statement of truism at the time that was made by Dr. Baumia. So we need to bring all those issues to the fore. Indeed, President Anad Branko Ekufuado hmm, also indicated to the good people of Ghana, yes, that we are not going to experience any, hmm, and this one, people can go on my Facebook page and just go and check. It's something which is in the public domain. I don't need to... Where is it? I posted it yesterday. Hmm? Uh -huh. So this one, Dr. Baumia indicated that no village will have water toilet problems in our first two years. <laughs> eh? No village mm. will have water and toilet problems in our first... Even cities. Are no having, village. Them are. You know, no, that's why he said no village will have water. And I presume that this was on the back of the one, one village, one, one dam project. Yeah. Mm. But there's been water shortage even in Tema. Boom. Mm. And it's a virus. Which place is there no water? Uh -huh. So that that statement for me, where is the other one? Aha. Uh -huh. In 2014, what, what day is, what month is 7th? May, right? Seven. July. Yeah. July. July. Yeah. So July. on the, July. that beautiful, beautiful date, 7th, 7th, 2014. At exactly 1.26 p.m. So 7 July 2014. His Excellency, on that day. At that time, he was not president. Yes, he, he, no, uh, no, now he's president. So I'm, I'm addressing okay. him by that. Yeah, but you have to okay. The that. then yeah. candidate, Nanad Danko Ekufuado, exactly. hmm. indicated that under John Domani Mohammed's administration, we had no water. We had no electricity. We had no petrol. We had no money. We had no jobs. We had no mercy, and above all, there was no World Cup victory. There was no World Cup victory. This mm. was in 2014. This was when he was, seek, he was trying to seek the mandate of, of the Ghanaian people, people mm. to be the president of the Republic of Ghana. Fast forward, what has he done? Do we have water? Do we have electricity? Do we have power? Do we have petrol? Do we have jobs? Have we won any World Cup? In fact, have we won any Spoon Cup? We are talking about World Cup. If you <laughs> no, <I'm asking. laughs> we didn't even qualify for Africa Cup. Of this, the other <laughs> no, we've won the and African World Cup. Which one? <laughs> After the <laughs> World Cup, we won the other <laughs> twenty. <laughs> 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 uh, 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 our, our, you see, you see, we live in a very, a very interesting country. Mm. I mean, this, these issues, I'm sure we have. I mean, Honourable Lady Vuseni is one who has a depth of knowledge when yeah. it comes to appreciating the issues relative to the electricity crisis mm. and i'm sure has demonstrated that on a provocal on this platform right. i don't want to dwell on that because mm. i'm sure succinctly he's delivered yeah i just want to look at the issue regarding the hypocrisy of the ghanaian people mm. How come that we are faced with the very challenges which were used as a vehicle for the MPP to come to power? Why are we silent on that same issue which have come up? Mm. Why? Kwame, I'm sure you've listened to uh, uh, Honorable Sam Jonah. Uh -huh. I listened to the culture of silence. Of silence. Even he himself is complicit. Because why? Four years ago was the was the country better? Not at all. It wasn't better. Why is he talking yeah, now? Right. Because he is directly affected. Better late than never. No, no but he's directly affected. Fine, you can say that. The bush, that. Yeah, he's, a, he's a bourgeoisie. He's in a class. You see, mm. when there's a class system created within a class, mm. those who are not benefiting from that class system created within the class will find their voices. Rise up. Yeah. So what happens to the masses? Those who have never been represented by anybody Voices. and who have never benefited from the system in any way, shape, or form. What should they do? And we are the, unfortunately, honorable Obi, we are the ones who have been dead silent on everything that is happening in this nation. Mm. Why? Because we are following blindly the ideology, which ideology we don't even understand. So people are following the MPP, not because they believe in the MPP's ideology, but because they believe in a certain member of parliament who will find some 10 Ghana, 50 Ghana, 20 Ghana cities for them for mm. their survival. Including the media. Including the media. We are all complicit. You see, so when this happens, the politician deliberately creates a system 
which will always let you be at their beck and call. You will forever remain poor. Mm -hmm. So that when it's election time and they come, they'll find you no kofi and then you know you go and vote yeah. for them. So they will continue to impoverish the good people of this nation. They will continue to widen the poverty gap because they always want to use that as a springboard to launch their political careers. And that is the problem because we have fallen prey to that. And we must begin to look at that. How come that Nana Blanco Akufuado's administration is facing these challenges? Yet somehow, the very people who raised these issues prior to the 2016 elections have all lost their voices. Their silence is very loud. It's very, very loud. And I was very scandalized when I read I, on Twitter again. I was just, you know, surfing the internet. Mm. And then I chanced on a tweet by Professor Stephen Adai, mm. who was very loud prior to the 2016 elections, chastising the Mahama administration, bastardizing the Mahama administration, indeed, mm. calling the sitting president at the time eh, mm. a liar. Together with his minister, says the president and the ministers are liars. <laughs> oh, so Nanad Rakhokufado is truthful? If Nanad Rakhokufado was truthful, so he was truthful to the fact that he was going to change the fortunes of the good people of Ghana within 18 months, <laughs> and that they had solved him. So you recall that they indicated to Ghanaians that they had solved him. So they had solved, but as time went on, the reality dawned on them. They have no explanation to, the, to give to the good people of Ghana because they have not added even one megawatt of power to the generational capacity of Ghana, of, 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 uh, uh, you know, of, 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 of this nation. Mm. And therefore, they were left with no other option but to admit, mm. admit in shame mm. that it was the NDC that addressed or, or solved the issue of doom so. And anybody, nobody can challenge me on this because Dr. Balbia himself mm. stated that if the NDC, uh, if Ghanaians are saying that the NDC solved Doomso, then it's, it's no news because the NDC created Doomso. Mm. So if the NDC had created so Doomso, they, they, they don't need to praise, they them, don't need to praise them because they created and they have solved mm -hmm. it. So it, there was an admission yeah. that the NDC had indeed solved Doomso. Mm. There were several other deals which were renegotiated. I think Honorable Lady was saying he made mention of a married deal and, and all of that. I don't want to go into that. My argument is that we don't need anybody's, we must not seek anybody's approval to bring to the fore issues which directly or indirectly affect the survival of the average Ghanaian. Very well. We must not seek support from anybody. Okay. Two, we must not sit on the fence and pretend as though nothing is happening in this nation. Mm. The only reason why many people in this nation sit on the fence is primarily as a result of the fact that they will be described as belonging to the NDC. Mm. So they won't even come out to speak on matters which matters borders on their own, their very survival. They won't come out to speak to those issues because they are scared to be tagged as NDC. But then it brings the question, it begs the question, Justice, whether or not any voice of dissent in opposition to that which is detrimental to the survival of the growth of this nation is a voice of the NDC. So we don't have conscience of our own to be able to raise matters which affect the material conditions of the people of this nation. And we don't have voices to raise those issues why is it that when we raise those issues we are described as belonging to the NDC? and i'm sure that you will receive messages mm. which messages will indicate that oh come you see that so is speaking for the ndc we must not continue all right to play politics in that light because we have one ghana and if we are not concerned about the things which happens in this country we'll get to a point where we will not no longer have any ghana to tend to. And that for me is very crucial, particularly the younger people of this nation. And I've always been admonishing mm. the young people to be concerned about being a national mm. 